what's going on? Super Bowl run, everybody. Welcome to the emergency James Bradbury uh, show as uh, we are live streaming on the old YouTube Twitch. And thank you for joining us on the podcast. As always, I am John Barr. Well, I guess I should be pointing that way because we're mirrored here. Uh, that is Vince Quinn. Uh, James Bradbury is a Philadelphia Eagle, Vince Quinn. And uh, we were literally 12 hours ago, maybe even a little less than that, bitching about uh, where I was bitching that uh, can we just stop with the CB2 talk already? I'm sure it'll get solved. I would be fine if they didn't even sign anybody. Like, it'll be fine. And now this man over here, has gone from this is a gap year to there are on the program and finally on board. And Quinn, how are you? Yeah, they're, they're Super Bowl contenders now. And like, look, look, the the progression of everything. Okay, uh, we we can talk about the progression of things. But first off, you were totally wrong. K Tay Gowan or whatever the hell his name is, totally ridiculous. You couldn't start a guy like that. Now you get a real start. You got two real starters on the outside. It's a totally different team now. It's a totally different defense. Like, because here's the problem, right? You can you can Darius slay me to death all you want. That's what you tried to do. Um, but still will, the by the way, is, because he's still the most important piece. Anyway, continue. Well, yes, but it, but he was the only piece you had in the secondary. He was a 31 year old corner. Like if you're dealing with a guy like that and he gets injured, you have nobody. You have nobody in the back end. You, the best guy you've got is your slot corner. So you're screwed. Um, but now you, you have a good defense. Like you have two legitimate number one corners on both sides. That's a great place to be. And and here, here's the thing where I'm going to take it up a notch for you, Jugs. This is going to get you All really right. excited. All right. I'm not going to comment about the safeties. I'm not going to do it. I'm not I'm not going to harp on, on at this point. How much are we not commenting on the safeties? Are you banning Kyle Hamilton's name from now on? Because oh, get the hell that, out of here. Um, but, okay. but, yeah, but see, that's what no. I'm saying. Not all the way there. All right. No, but 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 I'm gonna say I'm not gonna make it the whole off season about like oh my god. But they don't have safeties. You needed something. Like when you're building all of this, it's it, it's kind of like equilibrium, right? Like there's some floor that needs to get reached where there's a balance of things. So I, I needed to see somebody big in the secondary, whether that was a corner, whether that was a safety. You needed a big-time addition back there on the back end. They didn't have it. Now they got that guy. Like, the, to, to look at this team now and say this isn't one of the most talented teams, which people are saying, like you mentioned, and they're right, uh, this is a contender. I mean, I already said this like two, three weeks ago. This is the most talented group of pass catchers I've ever seen in my life on this team. Ever, ever, well, and, and with the offensive line, either. yeah, like the offensive line as good as it is, like all this piles up. Where I'm looking at a team, and I go, "Holy shit!" I mean, it's now the talent is there. It, it's it's there. Bradbury changes everything. I I mean I anybody would have changed anything. That's that's that was my whole point. Like James Bradbury is a very good corner, a great CB two to have. Better than Steven Nelson? Yes, absolutely. Miles seven, better. Seven million dollars better than Steven Nelson? Yes. I, I, I don't know about that. There's yes. An, well, and, and not to take a cue from the Carolina Panthers, but there's a reason he didn't have a long-term contract there. And granted, it's a, it's a rival, and I'm not saying that I'm not excited by the signing. I'm ecstatic by the signing, so don't take it the wrong way. But, you know, that's from a division rival. And uh, apparently there was 13 other teams that were involved uh, the Eagles were in the top three, and I am guessing they absolutely paid top dollar uh, that that ten million dollars, uh, and then they were, you know, that kind of went to set them above the pack. So obviously, I am jacked that he's here, but I don't. I I, I think you would have been fine with with what you had, or if you signed another guy off the street, they needed another body in there. But this is going to take it into the stratosphere, not only because it's a great signing, because this is exactly what Eagles fans wanted. I mean, you give us A.J. Brown, oh, my God. Now you fill out the rest of the, the defense. Everybody kind of sees where this is going now after kind of weeks of discussion, and there is an overhaul. You've got speedy-ass pass rushers. You have got uh, uh, some people even saying, to your point, this is where I know people are getting overexcited. This is the best wide receiving core of my lifetime. This might be the best secondary I've ever seen in my lifetime or whatever it is. And that might end up being true. And if that is true, then you have to say that they're going on a Super Bowl run. And then everything that I've been saying about this team's ceiling being the NFC championship game is now very real in just one signing with the corner and Vince Quinn and probably a lot of you that are out there. Now you don't have to run the ball at all, which excites the hell out of me. You don't have to play this three, car, uh, three clouds or, or actually six yards in a cloud of dust 
uh, when it's coming to the Eagles. But I mean, uh, this this does change a lot. Like uh, we were just talking about it on the last episode, and feel free to go back and listen to that because we had some interesting discussions about Hargraves and Cox and kind of where all these guys stand. But Bradbury allows you to do so many incredibly unique, fun things with this front seven. Uh, and that's probably the time that you were looking for there, Vince Quinn, right? That extra .5 seconds with James Bradbury covering as opposed to the take out? Well, yeah, it, it, it's the extra time that you're going to get in coverage. It's the ability to mask your safeties a little bit because we still really don't know what those guys are going to be. I don't think it's going to be good. And, and this is to the point that you made yesterday, which I didn't agree with yesterday, but now I agree with today, which is that you can't have it everywhere. I understand that, which is why, again, for me, it was like, all right, you need a one safety or you need one more corner. You, you need one of those two. You're not like last year, the linebackers have mostly always sucked. I know that's the deal. It's not their focus. That's fine. You can't win at everything. But now, I mean, for this year, yeah, this is it. This is it. Like, this team is so good now. This team is so good. Am I worried about, like, CeeDee Lamb and Michael Gallup at this point? No, I, I don't care about that. The Saints, I thought that I said a couple of weeks ago, I was like, yeah, man, the Saints are going to hit us for like 500 yards now that they signed Jarvis Landry. But oh, they yards. Can, they can cover those guys. Well, yeah, yards, but whatever. <laughs> whatever with you and the yards. But like they can cover all that stuff now. So I'm just, I'm looking at this team because for me, I, before this signing, I was like, okay, can they win a playoff game? Yeah, I can see them getting to the playoffs, winning a playoff game. Uh, but now they're the best team in the division. Best team in the division, in my estimation. There's no doubt about it. And that gives you the opportunity to, yes, win two playoff games, get to the NFC Championship mm -hmm. game, which means that in a weak NFC, look, the Rams shit the bed in the NFC Championship game. Very popular on the show now, the Rams. Uh, and popular in the Discord <laughs> as well as a result yeah. of that last episode. And, but, and shout but, out, by, wait, by the way, shout out to Nanks, too. I can't name one person in the Rams secondary outside of Jalen Ramsey. And if you can too, congratulations! You're a lot smarter than than 95 of our Discord. So yeah, th there's there's some guy named Hill, and uh, there was uh, Eric Weddle, the, the corpse of Eric Weddle. <laughs> oh, so yeah, that's about as far as I got. Yep. But also, they had a great offense, and they could cover it up for the Eagles. Oh. You don't have to worry. Well, yeah, well, the Eagles, we had no guarantees they could do that because I still like Jalen. The, the biggest questions on the team now are the obvious, dumb, annoying things that we're going to talk about into oblivion. But what what are the biggest problems with the team? It's is Nick Sirianni any good? Is Jonathan Gannon any good with the new scheme with all these all these new pieces and could Jalen Hurts play like that that's let, what let you're me, looking wait, wait. at now let's let, okay, run that for, first question back again what was the first question first question it was uh I don't know it was either Sirianni or Gannon S is Sirianni good right yeah next is Gannon uh, good okay okay is Jonathan Gannon any good with this new system next all right is Jalen Hurts a great quarterback next I think you should be empty on the bag of chips at this point. Uh, that's, that's that's all. The, those are is the questions. Jordan Davis, that's it. Is Jordan is Jordan Davis the dog? Yes. Uh, Georgia is the Bulldogs, technically. Yes. Um, so is Kobe so Dean a dog? Technically, yes. yes. Do we have a bunch of speedy linebackers go blitz the shit out of the quarterback? We do. Yeah. Does this seem like we're gonna go kill your quarterback? We don't care how many yards we give up. We're going to make sure you get hurt and feel it. And then we're going to go score a bunch of points on you because we're going to run RPO and, dare I say, run a lot of tempo this year and fuck you up across the middle, fuck you up deep. And then there's Kenny Gainwell to out-snap Miles Sanders in week 11. And then there's all these other different offensive weapons. And then we're doing this thing. We're going, you remember my impression of Devontae Smith? What was my impression of Devontae Smith? <laughs> I'm fucking open. Wait. I'm fucking open. And then there's Dallas Goddard, who's just hanging around in the middle doing whatever he does in the red zone and scoring touchdowns. So who in the world, in the division, is going to fuck with this team? What's Zero. Zero. Who is going to screw with this team in the NFC? Not many. Which means that this year, we together are all about to go and see the Eagles on a Super Bowl run in Jason Kelsey's more than likely final retirement year, and Howie Roseman just did this. I'm all in. And this is something that we've been pondering for a long time and question fucking answered with James Bradbury and the rest of this offseason, because guess what? They're not done. There is still a lot of time. I'm still not giving that up from last episode. There's plenty of time to add on more. I know that we're going to end the Jesse Bates 
debate now, and maybe this was part of the reason of the price was too high, let's just go sign James Bradbury to $10 million, figure it out later. But Marcus Epps is good enough as well to hang with this crowd. But go get me more. If this thing festers on in the middle of the offseason and Jesse Bates is still available, I am planting down at least one first to say, yes, please, if this team is 5-1, five 5-2, and one, five and two, six and one whatever it is at the deadline there's so much ammo here every single person has to apologize for calling howie roseman and nick siriano a liar when they said jalen hurts is our guy and it's the first time a franchise in the history of sports has not lied to our face directly and said we're going to back this kid he's qb1 and they went and fucking did it let's ride god damn it vince quinn this is an 11 win team 12 win team a 2002 three four type of feel where you got a nice young quarterback a nice core and the only thing that i need to do is have everyone buy into jalen hurts can go win you a super bowl and if everyone can feel that in the first couple of weeks of the season it changes the whole thing and where we thought this team would be and this turnaround if this hits was one year one year and that one gap year was a back end of the playoffs running their assholes off and getting beat by tom brady hat tip howie roseman phenomenal offseason well phenomenal. it is it, it is going. no it's it's an amazing offseason but let's let's talk a minute because when we opened this up you, you were going to me and you're like all right well you went from gap year to uh, this is a contender so what the hell happened right well Here's what happened. I mean, we're talking about, uh, and these were things that you agreed on too. Front office, all these different people leave. They're signing for or pushing for all these big free agents, and nobody came here. Al Robinson's not here. That was the target. Marcus Williams was not here. That was the target. Those were the guys that they were looking for. So now you're going, okay, well, all the major free agents got signed. There's no wide receivers left. We were all hoping for, well, not we all, but people were hoping for Devontae Parker, and I will say that a million times. I mean, that's Something. where this offseason was. Yeah, like that's where it was. Uh, A.J. Brown falling out of the sky like this is a miracle, and the Titans are stupid. Like there's really no other way to put it. I mean, the, the, this is and this is where it's peak Howie Roseman. He took advantage of rare situations with dumb front offices and made the most of it for his team. A.J. Brown is the busy, biggest example that. of that. He's always done that. Well, yeah, he always does that. But we we when we were saying gap year, you couldn't predict that A.J. Brown was going to be on the market. Like we. Debo – Who's this? We. I'm not saying gap year. No way, gap year. We here. were. We uh, uh, three months ago. We were. All right. We got to go review the tape. I don't think this is it. All right. But but regardless, yes, masterful job. Despite the the non, the non looking like it was playing, it's here. It's in front of us. Time this to rock is it. and roll. <laughs> this is it. Like, look. It, yeah. They they can the Eagles win the Super Bowl this year? hundred percent. Yeah. They belong in the conversation now. The NFC is so weak. The NFC is so weak. The schedule is weak. They've got every – like, if they can't do it right now, I mean, we're going to have a lot of questions about the identity of this team because the talent is stocked. I mean, it's I don't know if it's the most talented team I've ever seen yet, but it's its pretty fucking talented. And uh, and what fun it's going to be to go and, and see all this play out. I mean, and for us, like, yeah, being on the road with Philly sports trips and to go, like, the Washington game and yelling oh at Carson God. and doing that on the way, yeah. like, five years after the Super Bowl, this is, this is going to be phenomenal, dude. And we're going to be recording everything on pretty much every second of every single game for a lot of different reasons. And if you're in the Discord, you already know that reason for sure. But uh, I am uh, I'm ecstatic to see this unfold with Philly sports trips and Vince is absolutely right all you got to do if you're watching on YouTube and for those of you listening it's just a simple text 215-509-5833 simply just text take me to Washington and that will get you an all-inclusive package to that game which just got off the phone again today this is what's great you sign James Bradbury we end up signing new beers can't wait to tell you about that as there's going to be one hell of a tailgate down there either beforehand on the bus we'll be streaming on that we're trying to get a bell in the birdman bus specifically down there to do some fun things like that so if you want to go to washington with us 215-509-5833 take me to washington all courtesy of philly sports trips philly sports uh which are heading out by the way if you're a huge phillies fan and for some reason vince is going to a phillies game today 
Uh, that's uh, that's which is another amazing part about this day. Uh, they are booking a lot of different trips, including um, the uh, the the Mets trip, which I know is coming up here in a little bit. And bonus, if you feel like going to the Hall of Fame on August fifth to see Dick Vermeil get uh, inducted into the Hall of Fame, we are planning to go to that one too. So phillysportstrips.com and uh, head on over there right now. And especially, don't forget, we're giving a free trip away to Washington as well. Vince, um, there's, there's lit- this general manager has given, I think, all the support. And like we said on the last pod, zero excuses for Sirianni, for Gannon, for Hertz. If we all believe right now that sitting here in May, and we really shouldn't change our minds as we get into June and August, although we probably will, if we think that they're a Super Bowl contender, then we really can't say much about Roseman's jobs and the ability to go do this stuff, right? Other than the being the guy that hired and made the uh, choices to get his quarterback here. Well, yeah. Look, talking about Harry Roseman, we fought about it during the offseason. I think he's one of the best executives in the league. I literally tweeted the Eagles today to say, hey, I need a Howie Roseman jersey in the store. Like, I, I, don't, I don't know what we could do, but we need put some a, Howie put merch, a, man. Put like a golden iPhone that just like has Howie uh, with his sunglasses on. That, that should be his jersey. I think. Or they sell right. binoculars with Howie Roseman's <laughs> signature on them. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, yeah, Eagles get back to us on that one for sure. But um, uh, we'd love to hear from you regardless. Uh, yeah, I, I fully believe that this is going to turn the tide for a lot of people. Eagles are going to be a huge talking point. They already have been since since A.J. Brown. Well, uh, we're just keeping this nice, short, and sweet for you. We, uh, we hope you enjoy the rest of your week for sure. But did want to tell you uh, the Eagles Autism Challenge is on Saturday, which is uh, very, very awesome. Also happens to be uh, my daughter's first birthday. So uh, we are not going to physically make it to the challenge this year. But um, uh, we are going to release a special pod uh, with uh, my good friend Shante Davis that uh, Vince uh, helped uh, produce and shape and make sound wonderful and beautiful and it's actually a little bit of a present for everybody because we recorded this as a pilot for the Philadelphia Eagles themselves. We are trying to make this uh, thing go. Um, I don't think it's possible now, but uh, it is still um, something we'd like uh, you to listen to and uh, just something we're putting to probably put together every year and maybe even start a, uh, a brand new show with uh, Shante Davis who is such a great uh, advocate and huge Eagles fan, amazing Eagles fan on top of being all over the place in the world of autism, an author, a speaker, a writer, and someone that um, I get a lot of information from and guidance from uh, as a parent when dealing with uh, a lot of this stuff. So um, Super Bowl runs uh, are happening. Autism runs are happening. Can't thank you enough for all your support, especially you listening and watching right this second. Uh, this season is going to be amazing, and uh, Vince Quinn has one more well, thing on that as well. Yeah, so when it comes to the Eagles Autism Challenge, by the way, so if you go to our website, bellandthebirdmen.com, we do have our own donation drive that yes. we're running. So our goal is $2,500. We're just about at 1900 And here's here's the great thing about this. For every dollar that you donate right now, the Eagles just released this, for every dollar that you donate, they will match that dollar up to, I believe it was $500 is what Pretty I had awesome. seen. So Pretty awesome. if you've got any money that you want to give towards the Eagles Autism Challenge, you're going to double your donation, essentially, by supporting the cause. So we're, we're just 600 away, folks. We just need 300 right to get there. to the finish line, John. Which is amazing because 2,500 was the goal. Um, I'm sure we have uh, uh, passed around some other things from events this past uh, other year as well. So that would just add to that big total as well and um, change so many lives by doing so. Vince is right, bellandthebirdmen.com. Uh, uh, should be right up front there uh, for for the Autism Challenge. And on Saturday, uh, you will hear a, uh, a a great bonus episode with me and Shante Davis explaining exactly why um, uh, that is important and where those dollars go to and how much it actually does help. So thank you so much for watching and listening, guys. I'm John Barchard. That is Vince Quinn. Wherever Taylor Cordatus is, I hope he's drunk and doing push-ups, and we'll see you real soon. Okay, bye, guys. <laughs>